Hey guys, welcome back to Conversation Club. Today we're going to look at my top 10 of 2022. Hey guys, welcome back to Conversation Club. Hope you guys had a great Christmas, great holidays. Uh, we're wrapping up 2022. Uh, this is one of the biggest videos I've ever had to make. Uh, simply because the amount of time that it took to get to this point. So over the course of this year, I started my YouTube journey in January this year. Um, I decided to become, to go into the slot car community and create my content for the slot car community. Um, but... Over the course of this year, I've bought over 150 cars. So to get down to top 10 is very difficult when you are a car enthusiast and you have to pick your top 10 cars. So let's go through some disclaimers. I am a novice slot car racer. Uh, so I have I classify slot car racers from beginners to extreme. So it's beginner, then novice, then intermediate, then advanced, then extreme. Okay. Uh, and the reason I do that is so that I understand what I have to do to progress to the next level. Now, I'll release another video on how I do that classification. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm a novice slot car racer. I'm a collector. I, have a, I do like to collect the cars. That's because I'm a car enthusiast. So uh, I see cars that... I would never be able to afford in my dreams, but I will collect them in all their miniature forms, uh, whether it's be in RC or whether it be in slot car, now predominantly slot cars. So yeah, I have over, I, this year itself, I said, like I said, I had bought over 150 cars. So coming it down to top 10 uh, meant leaving a lot of favorites behind. Uh, and some of these might be controversial, but once again, I chose cars that one, I had raced, or two, had a really incredible story behind them, or three, uh, had uh, a very special meaning to me, okay? So as long as we get that clear, uh, and you guys will understand my selections. Now, by no means are these probably the fastest cars. By no means are these cars that have dominated in the world championships. Uh, no, <laughs> these are personal cars that I have driven and I have enjoyed. Okay, so we got all of that out of the way. Let's proceed to honorable mentions. So in my honorable mentions categories, um, I'm going to start with um, a car that means uh, a lot to me. So I grew up in Kenya and, you know, I, grew, uh, I mean, a lot of my friends grew up in North America and their version of classic cars are like, uh, you know, the classic NASCARs, the old Chevys. Uh, unfortunately, in Kenya, we didn't get to see much of that. Uh, what I remember growing up was the rally cars. And, you know, the East African Safari Rally was part of the WRC. So uh, the rally cars went through East Africa, and I got to see them live as a kid. I used to ride on the, um, with my uncle on his motorbike to go check these cars out. So... Um, out of these cars, uh, there's one car that really captured my attention, and that was the Lancia Delta Integrale. So this car, and finding this car in Spain when I went to Barcelona this year, is one of my, you know, uh, dream catches, as you would say. And uh, so it has a special and honorable mention. It didn't make the top 10, but it is very dear to me, near and dear to me. So this is one of the honorable mentions. <clears throat> a second honorable mention is uh, another car that is not really a car. Um, so this is a car that came out from Korea this year uh, that I felt broke the norm, and um, I'm pretty intrigued by it. Now, I haven't run any races with it, but I look forward to in the near future when the rest of my club members get their own liveries and uh, we flesh it out a bit. So the car that I'm talking about is the Carrera Trucksters. 
the to to me this is an amazing addition to the hobby it gives us a different dimension of uh racing mechanics um and uh, you know uh it, it's nice to have variety and this is uh, a nice addition from the Carrera lineup right so you guys know that when i say i'm a novice racer i'm really a digital racer predominantly um, I started to get into a non-magnetic racing very recently. So um, one of the step ups into that and the first car that I ever bought that was a non-magnetic car specifically built for uh, wood track and my honorable mention number three is uh, the most expensive car in my collection <laughs> is uh, this Scale Auto 124 sc uh, scale um Audi's race car. So these chassis are amazing. These are purely for wood track. This car has been modified for wood track running. It has the sponge tires. It has the wood guides. Um, it has ballast in it to make it uh, corner properly. Uh, there's a lot of work that went into this car. And this is one of my two race cars that are predominantly for wood track. So this is another honorable mention that I didn't make in top 10. It also doesn't fit into my collection because it is a 124th scale car. Um, uh, another honorable mention here would be the SP333. This is another car from Ernie Musetti. Uh, once again, this car just came in, so I, I've been driving it a little bit, and I love it. Uh, but not enough to make it into the top 10. But once again, a beautiful car. If you can pick one up, pick them up. There's only 550 for each livery that was created. Uh, so pick them up if you can. The amazing car. Um, another car that deserves an honorable mention. Again, didn't break the top 10. Might surprise people. This is my track leader right now. Uh, this is the NSR Formula 1. Um, it's a great car, but um, I, I don't know... Um, Formula One cars to me are supposed are supposed to dominate tracks. Uh, they are the most engineered cars out there. So uh, it didn't surprise me that I broke the track record. And it is a fun car to drive. And probably if I had a racing class in this, it'd probably be something that would crack the top 10. But it didn't for me because I don't have those things. And lastly in the honorable mentions is a brand that um, I've been racing for a long time. Uh, I'd say that I started my uh, novice journey. My beginner journey, I started in when I was eight years old. Um, and I became a novice probably in 2008 when I bought my first Carrera track, uh, digital track. And uh, I started to uh, race at a club. And one of the predominant brands at that club was a slotted. And unfortunately, it hasn't made it into my top 10. But that doesn't mean that I don't respect Slotted. I think Slotted is one of the best brands out there in terms of competitive stock car racing. And the componentry from Slotted is used in many, many different brands because they're so good. So this is an honorable mention, not just for the car, because I do love this car. It is the GTR that came out from Slotted this year, but also because of the brand. And I think the brand needs recognition, but it didn't make my top 10. So there we go. All right, so we've got the honorable mentions out of the way. I know there were quite a few, but I meant I, I think that it was important to, uh, you know, talk about that, these cars because they did break a little bit of the norm for me, and um, I wanted to have them as part of this video. Car number 10 in, is a very weird one for me. Um, I've been buying a lot of historic box sets, uh, and one of the box sets that I bought was this Fly uh, Golf GT40 team box set. And the thing about this set is when you get it, it's supposed to have three cars inside, uh, but uh, Fly released this box with no number nine. So when I bought this box set, the number nine car was missing. So this year, uh, and I've been looking at for it since. So this year we went to a swap meet. I guess um, it was a model car builders and slot car enthusiasts uh, meet up here in Toronto. Uh, and 
Luckily for me, one of the club members knew I was looking for this car, and he found it. And so car number 10 in my top 10 is the Fly GT40. Uh, I have a bunch of these cars. I actually wrecked the number 9. That was before I got the historical set, um, in, and that was in 2008. So I was really upset at myself because I had that set, and I had it not completed it. But this year we found it, and we found the number 9. And it is from Fly, and it fits into the set, and so I complete my set. So this is car number 10 uh, in my journey, uh, in my top 10 uh, for 2022. Uh, so uh, just a nostalgia find, but an amazing find from my, from my point of view. Okay, moving on to car number 9, the car that was a non magnetic car that I just had a blast driving straight out of the box was none other than the Alpha Julia from Revo Slot. Now Revo Slot has made some beautiful cars. I've collected this is my first year collecting Revo Slot and I have probably over 20 in my collection right now. But yeah, this Alpha Julia uh, was a car that uh, you know once I got uh, to driving it I, I just couldn't stop um, it was a car that just felt so good. It's so small. Um, you know, it was a small, quick, nimble car. Uh, you know, really great for my track at home, the DDT. And, uh, yeah, really awesome car. Had a lot of fun. And that is car number nine. So car number eight in my list is a odd car. But I had a lot of fun at the beginning of this year. Because uh, we were trying in my basement league, as I call it, um, we were trying to even the play f playing field. And uh, we all went over to Panther Hobbies, which is a local hobby shop. And uh, each one of us had to pick up the same car, but in a different livery. And there was only two options. It were Lamborghinis or the car number eight in my list, which is the Mustang GTY. So this car... Uh, was a lot of fun to drive, a lot of harder to drive than most cars because um, it was completely stock for us. Uh, it was hard to get tires for it because at that time Paul Gage didn't have tires when we decided to race this. Uh, so we had to tune these cars ourselves. Um, my version of the car, I ended up uh, removing the tires, truing down the actual plastic rims, um, and uh, I had to break in the motor. So I did a lot of things to my car just to make it a little bit faster, uh, faster a little bit more competitive. Uh, and this really got me into that, you know, moving on to that intermediate level where I started to really understand, uh, you know, slot car mechanics and, and starting to really drill down to what I had to make, uh, to, what I had to do to the car to make it better. So this car is car number eight. It does fit so many, um, you know, uh, check marks for me in terms of my slot car development journey. All right, moving on to car number seven. So um, when I got in, uh, introduced to the Scale Auto and 124th scale, uh, the car that captured my attention was the Viper GTS. And um, I have always been a big Mopar nut ever since I came to North America and I've owned the fastest Hellcat. I used to be an avid uh, Mopar racer on the Canadian Sport Compact Series until I had health complications. So uh, it was a no-brainer for me when I found the Viper GTS to try and pick up a 132nd scale. At that time, nobody in North America was carrying the scale autos, uh, so I ordered these directly from uh, Spain. And this is the Viper GTSR. It is the modern look Viper, uh, the current racing model that uh, you know was racing, I believe, in 2014, 2015. Uh, so uh, yeah, I bought two of these from Spain. Uh, the reason why this one is special is that when this arrived, uh, when I taken it over to Ernie's at Scale Auto Center, and uh, we put it on track, there was something wrong with it. And then when we opened it up, we found that the chassis was cracked. Uh, it was a micro crack, but it had cracked nonetheless. So Ernie uh, did me a solid uh, and got me uh, a metal chassis for this car. So this is fully teched out for wood track racing. 
uh, and it's got a metal chassis on it, and it is amazing on the wood crack. Uh, so really happy, and this car takes my number seven spot. Uh, moving on to car number six. Uh, car number six is uh, my Skelectric. It's from Skelectric. Um, it is the car that I did the most work on in Skelectric this year. This was a car that I put up on my channel. Uh, also, it was an impulse buy. Um, I saw the Bentley GT3, Continental GT3, uh, sitting in earnings shelf. Uh, it was, had come out of the set, and um, I picked it up, and... I then took it home. I ordered the cast and chip. I converted it with a scare uh, with um, style invasion guide, uh, and it's just a beautiful car. I've always liked the Bentley Continental GT3s. Uh, this is a car that I'd love to run on the track, and being able to have one um, in my collection was very important for me. I love the color, the matte green look on it, and yeah, it sits pretty high on my list. At car number six, but that's because I did a lot of work with it, uh, and it was a joy to drive. Uh, so that's my car number six. We're getting into the top five now, and in the fifth position is a car that was hugely anticipated from Carrera. Um, when it came out, it sold out super fast. Um, I had to scramble to get mine. Uh, and it is none other than the C8R from Carrera. Uh, this car is gorgeous in all its liveries and all its newer liveries that just come out. Um, it's an amazing race car. I personally don't race it, uh, but other members in my club race it. Uh, in my basement club, I should say, race it. Uh, and I do have it also in this electric version. Uh, but yeah, beautiful car, huge anticipated uh, was sold out within minutes of it arriving. So, yeah, definitely takes a top spot uh, somewhere high up in my list. Car number five is to the C8R from Carrera. Uh, but hits number four on my list is none other than the po Polycar 412P. Uh, this is the first Polycar I ever bought. And boy, did it shock me. When I put it down on my track, it was so quiet. It's still one of the quietest cars that runs on my track. And super fast, super quick, super lightweight. Uh, obviously has a lot of the static componentry. So as much as I didn't make it, this car with all the static componentry definitely made it on my top uh, 10. I uh, made it to number 4 position. Amazing car. If you don't have one... Uh, do whatever you can to get your hands on it because it will shock you. It will surprise you. It is one of my favorite cars uh, going into 2023, but it makes number four on my list. Okay, so now we're getting into the top three. And uh, now it gets a little bit tight. It was a little bit difficult. I had to drop out some. I had some fights with some club members when I did uh, reveal my list to them. Uh, and that's because uh, this car, uh, to me, is my favorite NSR. I just started collecting NSR this year. Uh, and it is none other than the 908-3 from Porsche. Um, and, uh, you know, many people will argue that the 917 has just as much right to be here. But for me, this little car did everything for me. Um, it raced really well at Ernie's Plastic Track. It raced really well on my DDT. It was a car that you can mod and hop up, and I, I do have all the NSR additions coming for it. Uh, but it's just quick out of the box. It was fun. It's a beautiful short wheelbase. It's nimble. It checks up so many marks um, off a race car's dream, uh, a racer's dream car. So... Um, definitely deserves this number three position. Uh, I do have it in a number of liveries and will continue to collect it as it keeps on coming out. So that is car number three. Position is a car from Mr. Slotcar. So Ernie has been instrumental in developing me as a slot car enthusiast racer. Um, he's one of the nicest 
man I've ever met. Um, he's very knowledgeable, very quick to spread his knowledge. And he's helped me a long way. And one of the things that Ernie really helped me do better and the people around us, uh, the Scale Auto Center uh, in Toronto, uh, the, some of the top drivers there, they're very, very knowledgeable. And, uh, and I guess they saw through my passion, they've kind of taken me under their wing and introduced me to the non-magnetic racing. So the car number two for me is this um, Porsche uh, GT1 Evo from uh, Mr. Slocker. Now, this car is specifically tuned for Ernie's uh, beginner racing series. So it has a detuned motor. It All the cars have standard tires. All these cars are magnetless. And we race them um, in a beginner series. So this car, I've put in quite a few laps. Um, I've learned how to drive non-magnetic. It's absolutely amazing and i've had a blast doing it so this car definitely sits at my number two spot uh in fact my daughter has just picked up her own version as well uh she's getting really into stock car racing so i'm super excited so it's something that both of us enjoy it's the same car that we have um so i thought it deserved a really high spot on my list because of all the joy it's brought me and it's brought me closer to my kids so I'm super, super happy for it. The, my ultimate car that I raced this year, uh, the car that I love even in real life, um, and uh, a car that just did everything that I ever wanted it to do. It dominated the basement league that I have um, when it is none other than the Carrera Porsche um 911 rsr and this is the car that i raced predominantly this year um it is a car that i've done the most modifications to um i've changed the engine on this to a uh i think there's a predator and uh motor i have a slot invasion guide i have uh paul gage tires front and rear trude uh, i have the the plastic rims trude this car runs super smooth. It's planted. It just rocks on the track. A very uh, hard to de-slot. Uh, it just sticks. And um, this car has done uh, great, great things on my track uh, in terms of records, in terms of racing. And I'm super, super stoked to put that in the number one position because it gave me the most joy this year. And um, I have so many versions of this car, but... Uh, uh, yeah, the motor that I've put into that car is called the Piranha Power. This motor is the one that I run in it. It's a really cool drop-in plug-and-play plug motor for Carrera cars. So if you can pick one up, definitely get one uh, for your Carrera cars. Um, obviously, I can take it a step above and get a 3D printed chassis for it. And I'm thinking about that after speaking to Sean Casey. Uh, but, that, you know, that's going from that novice to intermediate level of uh, stock car racing. So... Uh, I think I'm tipping, dipping my toes into that intermediate level now. I just got a tire truer, a proper tire truer. I have a cheap tire truer that's just a standing block. Um, but yeah, that's my top 10, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Uh, I know some of them would be controversial, but like I said from the very beginning, these are cars that I had a lot of fun with, and I really enjoyed this year. So
give a big shout out and thank you to all the major YouTubers that have helped me along my journey. Um, like I said, I came from a car enthusiast background. Um, I'm very new to stock car racing, but Travis, thank you very much for spending the time with me. Uh, Marty for being such a good friend. Um, Sean Casey for, uh, you know, recently uh, becoming part of my stock car uh, life. Uh, Dave Kennedy for all the amazing content that he put out there. Um, Area 51 Racing for all the incredible advanced uh you know, pieces of information that you put out. Um, I thank you. There's so many other people that I should thank. Ernie, of course, uh, for all his knowledge and support. And I want to thank you for having a great 2022. And I look forward to expanding my slot car, uh, you know, journey uh, as I move to that intermediate level in 2023. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, if you like car reviews, I do them every week. Uh, I love cars and I have, like I said, I have a whole bunch that I've picked up that I have to review. Um, and thank you very much for subscribing. For anybody who hasn't subscribed and would love to support the channel, please just hit the subscribe button. Hit that, hit that bell. I don't know. For anyone who wants to support this channel and help out, please remember to hit that subscribe button below. Uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I go live. I'm going to do a lot more live streaming. I've tested out some new camera systems. Um, so my combination of videography and photography with stock cars, just like, uh, you know, uh, my dream kind of thing to do. So I uh, hope you guys have, have a great New Year's. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. And like always, Continue having fun on rails, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. For anyone who wants to support this channel and help out, please remember to hit that subscribe button below. Uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I go live. I'm going to do a lot more live streaming. I've tested out some new camera systems. Um, so my combination of videography and photography with stock cars is just like, uh, you know, uh, my dream kind of thing to do so uh hope you guys have have a great new year's um thank you very much for tuning in and like always continue having fun rails guys take care bye bye